Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Ah. Sort of. This is how they did it back in the 1600s. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm sure there's a quicker way. So anyway, there's a learning curve. You don't have a yellow cloth on your workstation. Who's a clever boy then? That was magic, babe. What are you making now, babe? Me? Yeah. Thought we'd have sausages for dinner. So you're back in the galley? Back in the galley. Making little sausages. Yum. Is that all you're going to say about that? Oh, I didn't know you're videoing. Um, I'm making, what does Wendy call them? Um, waggles. Waggles. <laughs> These are baggy wrinkles. This is part one. Getting rid of all your old line and turning it into four inch lengths. Then the four inch lengths should take the, the I don't like the bits of black in my baggy wrinkles. So take that out. Then you divide it even further into that. And then the next step I'll show you when I'm up to it. These were my ratlins that I spent hours making. That I'm gonna put solid timber ratlins on. Um, so I've now I'm going to convert these into baggy wrinkles because no point throwing stuff away in a boat you just repurpose it well no point throwing stuff away in real life you just real life in uh, land life you just repurpose it so, repurposing <laughs> just one power ball <laughs> I've got a pile too. Yeah, you're doing well. And a lucky last for this bit. So no, I've no idea how much baggy wrinkle this is going to make. Or oh, once you push it down, it doesn't seem much. Do I look like I know what I'm doing? Are you moving a lot of bits of string around? some fancy bits and pieces but I'm not convinced you know what you're doing there. Do you know Thank what you. you're doing? Thank you for the right of confidence. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Ah. Sort of. I've never made bacon wrinkles in my life. But I assume this is how they, they're made. Quite, well I'm guessing it's like a giant pom-pom. Which is what I've already said. But not to camera. So we're going to tie every single one of these little ones onto a long length. Let's hope it's not that laborious. It is, isn't it? Laborious. There must be, why don't you do like a pom pom where you do loads and then you cut it after? This is how it's done and has always been done. This is how they did it back in the 1600s. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm sure there's a quicker way. So now. Oh, I can't imagine what's coming. Uh, no, not each one. One of these. Not each one. You fold it in half. No way. Oh, babe, there's got to be a quicker way than that. There's no way you're going to do each one. Then you. No. Oh, yeah. You go through there. Yeah. This is not how you do it. Look at me book out. Under, under, and then over through the through. middle and pull it tight near the knot. And then you do that about 50,000 times and you're done. So every single one of those. <gasps> That is one power ball, isn't it? Yeah, I've done that much. Hold it up, because then you're in camera shot. Okay, cool. Wendy's done. <laughs> <laughs> that much. You're going to tell me I've done it wrong? No, you've done it perfectly correct. <gasps> How can you do so much in such a short time and I do so little? 
Well, mine's are all tight and perfect. Yours are not so tight, but nice. You're like, that's the difference. Yeah, your knots are tighter. Yeah, each knot I tighten up. But that's just... Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. Join them together perfectly. Hold them. Push them through. Pull them down. And there we go. It's one. Repeat. Mangus is caught up now. He's about to overtake me. Whoa. Technique's getting faster. Look at that. Me? Yeah. Definitely speeding up. I'm doing it with my eyes closed. Just woken up to this calm morning here in this anchorage where we were taken to yesterday by the rescue coast guard how different to yesterday it was howling 30 knots dogs are happy dogs are always happy too, aren't they so we're now on a beeline for early we're going to do um, a big passage or, or at least travel when we have wind and get back to early as quickly as we can so we can get the uh, gearbox sorted and get peanuts engine sorted so we've sort of cut this bit of our trip short for safety who knows we may decide to come back down after everything's fixed oh and by the way this is Fraser Island what have you got there? here I have the cabaretta for the peanut machine because Peanut has become intermittent. She just will not run sometimes. Um, and I've checked, put new plugs in, um, checked the fuel pump, and all that's left is now to check the carby and give her a clean out. I've never ever in my life have seen this many bolts holding on a float bowl. It's usually four. This says one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. Oh, a bit of gunk. That might be it then. Wow. Well, it's just a bit of water vapor. Mm. So anyway, we will keep searching for the offending article. You knew you were gonna need that bit of wire, didn't you? Well, it happened to be left over from the um, alternator. alternator. Why is that? She should just come straight out. Ah, there's our problem. Where's the problem? Look at the needle. Where's the needle? <coughs> I'll take this out and I'll show you. Right, so that comes off. So this is our float. Um, that sits in this bowl, right, and has got a needle valve here, which um, turns the fuel flow on, off, on, off, on, off, as and when required in the bowl. And this here, this little valve, this little needle should go up and down easily. Turn that over and it should fall out. So there's our problem. So you just have to free it up. So which, I'll lift it out, I'll show you how easy it comes out. We just give this a little, there it goes. That is your needle valve. Have you got a new one? Well, no, no, it's, it would be gunk holding it in there. Oh, okay, so it's um, just a clean up job. So now we undo this and we pull that out wonderful news and being a motorcycle rider um, any of you that are bike riders out there will have done this a thousand times dirt bike riders especially because it's a common problem better, yeah. better have a bit of your face but so far it's all been on the tools well, the tools are more exciting than my face oh, well, now you're not saying anything important okay but I need a big screwdriver haven't got one. That's the only tool. We know we haven't got one. We've got one screwdriver, flathead, in the whole it's boat, the one I think. one tool we've been saying we need to buy since we've got this boat. I know. It's such a, a simple tool. There's a screwdriver is up there holding the... It's here. This is, this is the flathead screwdriver. We might have to get it out. We might just have to. But that's taken months to get that in the right place. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. So you just can give it a bit of clean up and some fuel or, or something? Uh, well, we'll find out what the problem is first. Well, that's not blocked because you can see through the hole. There's a bit of corrosion in there. Is that something you replace or you just no, clean it? No, just clean that up. It's as tight as a 
That is as tight. I'm not allowed to say how tight. And it's not supposed to be tight. No, that's supposed, it's supposed to be just loose. That's supposed to. Well, the only thing that moves that up and down is the this floating in fuel. Ah, right. I gotcha. So, and it only moves it up. It falls down by with with gravity. Mm -hmm. So gravity is what causes that needle to fall down. And as you can see, gravity ain't doing jack there. Right. Yeah. So that should just fall out. So okay. then we use the float level coming up to push this back in to stop fuel flow. Gotcha. So that should fall out easily. Clearly it ain't. I've now cleaned out the um, needle holder. And if I turn this upside down now, it should just fall out. So now I'll just reassemble, uh, recheck. And while I'm at it, I'm going to clean out any little dilberries around the place. Yeah. And get it all tickety boo and hunky dory and good to go. So, how are you feeling about that, Doc? Well, I knew I'd fix it. <laughs> well, you, you sort of, there's not, carburetors um, are the easiest thing in the world to fix because they've been around for a long, long time and they've been designed, <clears throat> design essentially hasn't changed. Since the twenties, um, the design is so simple. Um, air gets sucked through. It pulls fuel through by Venturi effect. Um, you've got a, a little, well, in simple terms, a little flap which controls the air to fuel mix, air to fuel mixture ratio. Um, you've got a jet which controls the amount of fuel that can get sucked up. You've got one or two jets, three jets sometimes. Um, this is a side draft carburetor. It's the air goes through sideways. You have downdraft carburetors like Hollies and, uh, and other ones. Um, really, really simple. Um, the other type of carburetor you have is like on a chainsaw where you can, you have to move a chainsaw around all the time. So these carburetors only work off 15 degree tilts. 15 degrees that way, that way, that way, that way, they work. If you put this carburetor like that, it won't work because the float, right, only works in that angle. If you turn it upside down, that float's not gonna work anymore. So in a chainsaw, it's a slightly different system um, where you can have it, because you're always moving your chainsaw around and whipper snippers and all those sort of things, or weed whackers, um, what do they call them in England? Um, strimmers um, they can be all over the place but this one very very simple outboard carburetor this is the choke right all the choke does it blocks off the air so it gets more fuel uh, has a tiny bit of air let in let in so that it gets an enriched fuel air ratio um, on the fuel side and it starts easier and then flip the choke off opens that up again normally uh, fuel's being sucked up here, and as you hit the throttle, right, it opens another valve in there, a flap in there, um, which lets more air through, and by having more air, it sucks up more fuel. So that's how simple a carburetor is. Then you've got a couple of, that's your mixture adjustment. Uh, whoops, that's your idle adjustment actually on this one. It doesn't have a mixture, mixture screw by the look of it. No, it doesn't. Um, so that's just the air, this is just the fuel air ratio at idle, which is a critical point, especially on a two stroke. Um, yeah, so it's nice and simple, it's your fuel in, fuel comes in here, out there, fills a bowl, gets sucked through this um, jet, which is your main jet, which I'll take out in a second, comes up and gets dispersed here, um, and goes out. So this is your main jet, right? Have a look in there to make sure there's no dilberries. It looks pretty good. If there, this isn't very easy serviceable design because I've got a aluminium plug in the bottom there. Usually your main jet screws in there and you pull it out and you can service it very easily. If this was full of gunk, you might be able to get through from the top. I don't know, I haven't taken the top chamber off. So all we do with our main jet, hold it up to light. And if we can see a perfect circle in the middle, um, as you can there, that means there's, it's not blocked. Let me just give it a quick visual. There's no crap around it, so we'll put him back in. 
And when you're tuning for altitude and well, not that it matters on boats, but motorcycles and things, you, you actually change your jet size because there's different value, different amounts of oxygen at altitude. So you you don't want to run in a super enriched environment. So you go down in your jet size. <clears throat> Same if you're using different types of fuel, you have to play with jets. All right, so that's that. We'll put them out together and she'll run like a dream. So now we pop that float, valve, float needle back in there. We'll pin in and now we test it. Look at that, that's going up and down beautifully in there. Clean everything up. It's very, you have to take half the outboard apart to get to the carving. Out in the dinghy, we've got bits everywhere. That'd be right. The magnet's too big. Did you drop something down the hole? Yeah, I dropped a, um, a nut. I might be able to transfer some magnetism onto my screwdriver. Who's a clever boy then? That was magic, babe. I transferred some magnetism onto my screwdriver because my screwdriver could fit down. Do you like that? Yeah, good hint and tip. Full of hints and tips. Not a bad workshop. Use good. Next thing you can grab, could you please grab me? Are my needle nose pliers? Well, I put it all back in. Start of the engine runs like a dream, except now it gets too much fuel. The float wasn't shutting off. So I came back into the workshop, pulled it apart, and I noticed that when the float was going up, it wasn't really putting any weight on the needle and pushing the needle into the seat. So I thought, I wonder if this is like an adjuster for the seat height. And I thought, no, it can't be. It's metal on metal. I thought, no, it can't be metal on metal. It just doesn't work. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I forgot to put a washer in. So I had all my stuff here, and I thought, there's nothing I've forgotten to put in. So I said to Wendy, can you see anything in here that I might have forgotten to put in? She couldn't see it. Um, but if you look closely, <gasps> there, yeah. the same colour as the background, is a clear washer. And that goes on there, that goes on here, and voila. Now we've lifted the seat, the um, seat a bit further towards the fulcrum and we should have a nice pressure on the needle and seat to seal it off. So anyway, there's a learning curve. Um, Don't have a yellow cloth on your workstation. Yeah, or always double check that you haven't left anything behind. But I was so confident that I'd fixed it, I just went to town. So now, if we check, once I get the pivot pin back in. So now, if I check here, ah, nice bit of weight. You can feel the weight on that. So that's fixed it. On, off, on, off. Working like a Trojan. Put it back on again. And we'll be good to go. It's a little bit busy in the channel today. That's crazy. What is that? That's oh, a Riviera, Riviera Boating Society going yeah. out. 
Last night we stopped at this little place, which I think is called Little Woody Island. Made a plan to leave at about midnight with the tide and head out there to the ocean and then pick up some wind and sail for a couple of days and then the wind was going to stop and we'd just wait and then wait for the next lot of wind. But, woke up at midnight, mill pond. So, we're going to wait, see what happens. Because we can't go anywhere without wind or tide.